decided to come to Lagos. So on getting there, I was actually looking for a shop when they told me what the price is. It was so scary at that time. The price they actually gave to me for those small chances, you can get a, a very big shop in the Badon. So I knew there and then that I cannot afford to get a shop. But that's where I could start. So I started very, very little. In fact, the place where I started is not like a lock-up shop. It's an open place whereby you display, you bring your wares out in the morning, and you have to pack it in at night. After I had out all the payments, I was left with very, very little money. I started with 15 bundles of Ankara, like three of these. One, two, three. Very low. Right from onset, I knew I'm going to be an entrepreneur. As a child, you should be able to know what are the things that pique your interest. So I readily have passion for the business because at a, at a stage, I was even helping my mom to buy and to take some strategic decisions even while in school. So I discovered myself quite early that this is what I'm going to do. My mom actually made it very, very well in the business. She started in a Badon, Baggy Market. Baggy Market is like a Balogu Market here. So all along, while in school, travel for her, get her wares and all of that, from Kano, Republic of Bene, and sometimes we come to this Lagos to, to stock up the shop. And I find myself in a very, very, very different environment from where I was coming from more sophisticated, capital intensive, in terms of starting a business. So that was 94. I started selling in offices, instrumental payments. So that's the way I started. At some point, the customer base became so wide and getting my money out of instrumental payment became so, so difficult. I knew at that point I needed to get a shop. All over Africa, they, they, all, they usually come to Lagos. And I discovered that even people from Ibadan, from uh, Ondo states, all parts of Nigeria, it's like uh, Balogo Market is the center for all African prints. This business is quite capital intensive. Over the years, in the past, all the profit that I get in, I turn it back into the business. Yes, I'm fashion conscious, but I'm not extravagant. Because I knew where I was going, so I closed my eyes to so, so many things. I was able to prospect and know that this business requires a lot of capital. When we initially started, a lot of encouragement. Sales were there. Nigeria was so, so good. People were buying and you are encouraged. You brought in your wares, you sell off, you got your profit and you are able to restock. I was turning the money back into the business. I just invest in building myself up with the capital because I have a place that I'm going, that I'm going to make a statement in this market. And I know it's going to cost a lot. It was not the money alone, but the passion for the business that kept me going. Because I actually, I'm really, really interested in what I'm doing, whether it's bringing money or not. But I was happy with what I was doing. At some point, when I started, I discovered that uh, most people that we're buying from have become a resource person to them. 
They were actually working on our ideas at some point. They were actually buying from Ghana, buying from the uh, Republic of Benin. So going there, I just look at myself. That I deal with my customers directly. They tell me what they want. We know the colors. We know the kind of ideas of what they wanted. So we carry those ideas to the factories and all of that. We tell them this is what we want. And when we get to the factory, then we can do some modification and all of that. I design myself. In fact, my, my entire family, we are all designers, including my little children. You know, Nigerians were so sensitive to change. When the first label came in, people were just looking at the label like, what is this? Where is this coming from? You know, they, they basically ignore the label. Then, you know, you have such high spirits that what you are producing is the market, and off you go. I was disappointed. But whatever anybody is doing, what will keep you going, even when money is not coming, is your passion. And uh, seeing the first label with my name, I was so happy. I was not discouraged totally that I'm not going to forge ahead. So I just look at what could I do? Because at that point, we have already packed every other labels out of the shop. So we want to deal with our own soul label alone you know, at that point. So I had to change my mind. So we now introduce those old labels that we were selling alongside with the new label at that point. So when they buy two of my label, they might buy 20 <laughs> of other labels. That was my major, cha major challenge because I had to eat all, I, all that I have. Taking that giant step cost me all the capital that was on me. And you know what it means? When you, br you bring in something and people are not buying. And I don't have any other business. That's the only business that I have. Thank God my husband was able to feed me out at that time. <laughs> when the dollar came down, it brought the capital down to like, 50% of what you were working with. It was so, so challenging. A lot of business entrepreneurs in this market fizzled out at that point. I had some savings as a, as a businesswoman. I have an account that I don't want to use the money for business. So then, when this dollar crashed, I had to go into every account and pump the money back into the business again. Definitely, we have to increase price. Although the price increased, we're not able to match it with the rate at which the dollar crashed. So that uh, it won't scare our customer away. We still want to keep our customer going. We don't want to kind of price ourselves out of the market because there are a lot of cheaper alternatives, but we won't have the same quality. And we don't want to water down our quality. We still want to maintain the quality. But to God be the glory, we weather it and we are out of it. When I see people wearing my label, it gives me a kind of joy beyond the money that is being paid for it. I have so many customers that have a kind of allegiance to us. And I want to go to any, any length for such customers. When they come, whatever they, they want, I want to make sure that I satisfy them. The future of Ankara is Ankara has now become global. We see a lot of people that come in to, to buy. Fashion has exposed Ankara to a level that I don't think there is there's anybody that will not be able to wear Ankara. It is what you make out of the Ankara that will now determine your, your class. I see Ankara as becoming a global wear for every part of the world. I've never been to a place where I won't see anybody wearing that car. Yes, I'm wearing one of my labels, and the name of this one is Ewa by My Wolves. As the faction keep dictating pace, we also fall in it so that we don't, we, we don't become stale. So we are rebranding, we're bringing new labels so that we will fit in to the fashion of Africans. I see the future, I see Milestone coming out very, very great because we have put down a kind of uh, structure 
that will outlive me as a person. That was why we started branching out distributors. We want to have distributors all over Nigeria because we want other people to benefit from what we have uh, built so far. And I see Milestone becoming an household name. That is the journey of my life. And when they mention my wood in America, in Africa, it should be a name that will ring bell. That is what I'm actually working on.